What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Dream Catchers Fishing Channel. Hanging out in the shop today. I wanted to talk about one of the number one questions I get when uh, we're talking about swim baits and glide baits specifically. It's how do you get those followers to bite? And let me tell you something. The biggest, and I really mean the biggest mistake guys make when they're swim bait fishing. Listen, if you've ever done a big glide bait, you know you are going to move some monster fish. You're going to get a ton of followers. And the big question is, how do I get those fish to bite? And the reality is, not all of them are in the mood to bite. Um, a lot of fish are just going to follow out of curiosity or even their territorial. Maybe they're, they have a tree that's their tree, um, and that's just kind of the area. And they're just kind of curio curiously chasing it away or really just kind of like, hey, get out of here. But there's a lot of fish that won't eat, period. But there are a lot of fish that follow that you can convert to eaters. And this is the deal, right? A lot of guys, the biggest mistake they make when there's a fish that comes up and is following a glide bait, a lot of guys out of pure shock, they're just like, oh my God, and they just freeze. They just freeze. And I have guided now for a decade. I have never, ever, ever, ever seen a blueback herring, a gizzard shad, a trout, a bluegill, anything in our lakes when it is being chased by a bass. I have never seen it. <gasps> just freeze. Maybe they should freeze though because the bats definitely don't like it. They're always zipping and darting and, and swimming fast and, and acting crazy and the biggest mistake guys make is they see that big follower and it's just pure shock just like oh, oh my gosh and they just freeze. There's really one thing that I do one and it takes discipline don't get me wrong but one thing I do is I call it the do or die and I get these fish and they follow and a lot of times I'm reading their body language. Fishing big glide baits and big swim baits is a lot like bed fishing. When you're bed fishing you're constantly reading the body language of the fish. Is the fish making these big loops around the bed? Is it making the tight turns and it's getting upset at your bait? You gotta read the body language. It's the same thing when I'm glide bait fishing. If I have a fish that is just curiously following it and it's really slow, sometimes I will pause the bait just to see if that fish keeps coming and maybe engages that bait a little bit. But a lot of times, if they follow it with a little bit of speed and a little bit of aggression, those are fish that you can 100% get to eat a glide bait. And what I do is called the do or die. And here's a clip of a six pounder on a hinkle trout from earlier this year that I did the do or die. Oh my God. Oh my God. Four or five there. It's probably five. All right, so you can see that fish come up behind the bait. And what I do, I went whoo, whoo, whoo. And I took that bait where it's just gliding like this. And I went whoo, whoo, whoo and sped it up and what I did was really make that fish make up its mind in an instant. Am I just going to follow this thing slowly or am I going to commit to this bait, strike it and kill it and get it? And essentially that's what you want to do. You never want to stop your bait and what, like I said there are times when those fish are following and they're really geared up and you do that do or die and they get geared up again and you do the do or die and they go to strike it and then you do it again and all of a sudden they were going to strike it that second time and you pulled it away and they're like ah oh, that was my opportunity and then they because that's what they're doing. They're trying to figure out how to turn and square that bait up and usually headshot it or at least get the front half of the bait. It's funny, I'm holding this bait. This is a Hinkle trowel that I modified, did the fin modification on. Uh, but it's got teeth marks all on the front, almost none in the back. Because when those fish get up behind it, I'm gliding it, I'm gliding it. I do that do or die, whoo, whoo, and really pull that. That fish is going to try to turn and almost pivot and try to strike the head or strike the front of that bait. And a lot of times they get the front half of the bait and that other hook is gonna come and end up grabbing them in the side of their jaw or, or behind their gill. That is how you convert those fish, is what I call the do or die. And like I said, sometimes it's, it's you, you do the do or die, you go rip, rip, and it takes that bait and goes whoop, whoop. And then sometimes they come right up to it. And then you need to do it again, whoop, whoop. And a lot of times they commit or sometimes they come right up to it again. Okay, I think I see a giant. I know I see a giant.
she's behind it. She's gonna hit it. Got her that time. Oh, in the boat. <sighs> And the reality is, when they get really, really locked into the glide bait, I've had them strike it. This is no joke. Some of you may know what the eight trap method is. I literally eight trapped the fish today next to the boat uh, with the DRT Clash 9 uh, in glide mode. He's followed it. I, I, he's following. I went, whoop, whoop, do or die. He came right up to it. I said, do or die. He came right up to it. Do or die. He came right up to it. He's at my feet now. I literally just took the rod, put the rods up in the water, and just started dancing the rod like this. He comes up and eats it. Not a big fish, like a two and a half pounder. But it's a really cool strike. But it just reminded me, like, when those fish get really locked in and you're just playing body language, a lot of times they're just trying to figure out when and how to headshot that bait and, and really just how to strike it. So, biggest mistake guys make, they freeze. Listen, I know you're, you're like, you're so scared because they're following and you're like, oh, I always just pull it away from them. Listen, you want to pull it away from them, but you want to pull it away from them with speed. So that's what I do. I pretty much turn those followers into biters by doing the do or die and playing their body language. Just remember, when in doubt, it's totally okay. Here, here's the deal. What's the worst thing that can happen? They don't eat it when you pull it away from them, but I promise you, if you speed pull it away from them, do or die, whoop, 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 whoop. A lot of times, that's when you convert. Anyways, I hope this helped, and I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our videos, and hey, maybe I'll see you on the water. See ya.